So this episode today is about gestures, the archetypal gestures that Chekhov talked about in his book. Um, are there seven or eight or only six? It doesn't really matter. But let's just look at the this word archetype. It's a it's a misused and a lot and a misunderstood word. What it really means is archi means the first one, the very first one, like the blueprint. And type, of course, is the type, the archetype, the first type. For an exa for example, in mythology or in in literature as well, there is the archetype of the first man, the first human being, um, which was Adam. And I'm sure in other religions and in other myths and legends, there's a different archetype of the, of the first man. The first father, you could say, is God the Father, the principle of the Father. Um, and then everything derives from that. So what are these archetypal gestures? They're not um, feeling gestures or soul gestures as such. They are simple archetypal gestures. And what are they? Well, the first one is simply an easy example, but if you put a book down on a table or a cup down on a table, you could say you place it or you put it. So the first archetypal gesture is to place down onto something. It's like manifesting onto something, incarnating into something. The next one is um, deriving from that this little story. So you don't like what you've put down. So, or you decide that you don't want to put it in that place. So you lift the book up or you lift the cup up. There's this lifting gesture. It's not pushing, it's simply lifting. You just lift it and it rises by itself. It's almost as if the book suddenly levitates from the table without you touching it. Say now that you actually do um, grab it as it's in midair, as it's lifted, you then decide to carry it and it's a bit heavy, this thing that you're carrying. It's no longer a book, it's like a sack of concrete or a sack of potatoes. You put it on your shoulder and you drag it. Then the next one is, uh, you decide you don't want it, it's too heavy, so you throw it away. You don't just drop it, but you throw it a long distance. Well, it couldn't be concrete then, could it? Let's say it's a bag of feathers, but it'd be difficult to drag a bag of feathers, but you understand what I mean. So you throw it then away, the gesture would be throwing. You then decide to, uh, that you may want to further look at it. So you pull it towards you. You decide when you pull it towards you, you don't really like it at all, so you push it away from you. Then you decide that in fact that you don't really like it at all and you pick it up and maybe now it's a piece of paper that you actually rip it or tear it and that the split is down that way. I mean, you can tear this way, but archetypally the gesture would be simply that way to tear. So let me just demonstrate this for you. So, these gestures are not in any particular order, but let me just demonstrate. So the first one simply to, to place something on a table, to place it on the earth. You could also, it's almost like to give something, someone's receiving it, you place it in their hand. The next one now is it simply lifts off the table by itself, like a helicopter, it just doesn't rise, but Something, no, helicopter's not good. Someone just gives it a, a lift and off it goes, up. Yes, it is not pushing, it is simply lifting and you let it go, like just touching a balloon to lift and away it goes. Once you've lifted it, you then put it on your shoulders, whatever it might be, and you're going to drag it. That's the gesture. It is simply to drag. We'd use that as an example if you were playing someone who was very responsible for something, 
like a father with a family and a wife and was out of work and they felt responsible. They have to drag that burden of finding food to put on the table for the children. Once we drag it, we decide we don't want it and we throw it away. And the gesture is simply to throw, which is to throw. And you watch it. Does it land or not? But it simply is thrown. And once it's there, I've thrown it away, we decide we may be a bit more interested in it, so we pull it towards us and inspect it. That would be an example where you actually are pulling something towards you. Maybe Romeo is seeing Juliet on the balcony and he doesn't push, but he pulls her towards him as an example of how you would use that. And then we decide that we don't want it, we push it away. We reject something. We don't like it. We push it away from us. Once we've done that, the next one would be, simply be, I don't like it after all, like a newspaper, and I tear it, or I rip. Now, it's, that's the pure gesture. Of course, within that, when you do a gesture, your number two, your feeling life, will begin to move with it. But don't do it with too much color. We want the basic, pure gesture. The last one, and it's not mentioned, but I think, I don't know, I'm still working on it. It is simply to turn. Some people say it is like um, to squeeze, but there's a, a pulling in that, but there's also a turning, a pushing within it. There's a sort of ripping as well. The most important thing with archetypal gestures, every gesture that you do will always lead back to one of these seven or eight gestures. You use that then as a, a certain quality within your work. If you want to resist someone, you push them away. Go away, I don't like you, just get out of here. It doesn't have to be violent. It can be quite neutral to push, to pull, to rip, to drag, to throw, to lift, watch it go, and simply then to place. So, they were the archetypal gestures as we understand gestures. There's another word that Chekhov uses which is very um, well known regarding gesture and that's the psychological gesture. It's still part of the first pillar in that sense of how we create a character which means that we actually do a particular gesture with all of our body and that gets number two in toning. We drop the physical gesture and we intone that gesture in our number two. So the next episode will be all about the psychological gesture. So, see you then.